Welcome to worship here online at University United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas. Whether this is your very first time worshiping with us online or whether you're here every week, I want you to hear these words of affirmation. Whoever you are and wherever you happen to be on your faith journey or your life journey, you are welcome. Thanks again for joining us in worship. Let us prepare our hearts. Hi, my name is Teresa Wellborn, and I'm the senior pastor here at University UMC. Again, I'm so glad that you've made the choice to be with us in worship this day. On this Sunday, we observe the very first Sunday in Lent, a journey that will lead us to the cross and ultimately to Easter Sunday morning. I also begin a new sermon series today inspired by a book called Hope is Here, Spiritual Practices for Pursuing Justice and the Beloved Community. It's written by a now retired seminary professor named Luther Smith. Also in today's service, we will hear Mark, the Gospel of Mark's account of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. I also share with you that in this season of Lent, we will begin our worship service here online with a brief confessional prayer, a reminder of our desire to turn away from sin and towards God, a reminder of our deep dependence upon God. May our hearts join together in prayer at this time. Holy God, giver of life and forgiver of sin, we come to you now with hope, hope that you will always love us, hope that you will turn us around from what is evil and toward what is good, walk with us in this holy season, and help us to look clearly at our lives and at the world, that we may embrace all with love. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. And now hear these good news, this word of good news. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Before I share the scripture lesson today, I want to remind those of you who worship with us regularly online that first of all, we are so grateful that you are a part of our online worshiping community. I also want to let you know that in addition to this pre-recorded YouTube service that premieres at 11 o'clock each Sunday, in addition to that, our communication team is additionally recording our in-person worship service. So if you are viewing this um, at home or as you travel at 11 a.m. on Sunday, at the same time, our staff is capturing the sanctuary service in recording. It's a shot from the balcony, and so it's um, not as close up of a view, but if you enjoy the sight of the sanctuary and the sound of the sanctuary choir in full and those sorts of things, um, you can find that worship service here on our YouTube channel by Tuesday of the following week. So I share that with you for those of you that are interested. I also lift up prayers for those of you who are worshiping online because you are not feeling well, and we pray that you um, have just a Godspeed to your recovery. So our scripture lesson is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15, and it goes like this. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tested by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, today we have a story, a story from the Gospel of Mark, his account of the temptation of Christ in the wilderness. Now, other Gospels share this story, and when they do so, they elaborate, giving us more of the specifics of what took place. In Matthew and Luke, we hear about three different temptations. Jesus refusing to turn stone into bread, for example. He and the devil go on and on and have an engaged conversation, and to every temptation presented by the devil that is placed before Jesus, Jesus responds by quoting scripture, such as, You shall not test the Lord your God. We do not live by bread alone. So that's how the temptation story goes in other gospels, but not here in Mark. Here in Mark, the entire wilderness experience is summed up in just two short verses. The Spirit drives him into the wilderness. He's there 40 days, tested by Satan, with the wild beasts, and the angels wait upon him. That's all. That's all we get from Mark. So we begin filling in the unspoken, imagining what else might have been happening. Like the animals, for example, all it says is that the wild beasts were with him. Were they problematic beasts or friendly beasts? Part of the test? Or was this a Snow White type experience where the animals were cute and just keeping him company? And how exactly did those angels wait upon Jesus? Did they provide blankets and breakfast? Well, joking aside, mostly I imagine that Jesus carried with him a song into the wilderness. You know, I had never thought about that until recently. I don't know if it was because I was watching the Grammys a couple of weeks ago or because this year I'm spending a lot more time singing in the car with my kid, but for whatever reason, I've thought about Jesus carrying a song. Music is woven into the fabric of our human experiences, and I'm convinced it would have been for Jesus too. After all, he was born into a tradition that included everything from worship in the temple and a great collection of psalms. Song had a place in his faith formation. It's later, it's later in Mark's gospel, in fact, that um, Jesus' own death is approaching quickly, and he spends time with the disciples. It's just after the Last Supper. And then we read these words, 
When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And I wonder what that song was. If it was the same song that he carried with him into the wilderness, along with the angels and the wild beasts, a melody and words of God's love to accompany him. I wonder, I wonder what song carries you. This is a question asked in the book, Hope is Here, written by an African-American theologian who is a leading Howard Thurman scholar. Howard Thurman being the spiritual center of the civil rights movement. In the book, Hope is Here, the author poses this question, what song carries you? What songs do you sing through joyful and troubling times? The question is not asking, can you carry a tune? But instead, do you have a tune that carries you? Maybe it's a traditional hymn like Amazing Grace or I Come to the Garden Alone. I myself grew up singing Go Now in Peace in a round at the end of every single worship service in the church where I grew up. Years later, my father-in-law would lead family camps and close campfire devotionals with that same song. It's no surprise that at his funeral, the service concluded with the entire congregation singing together, Go Now in Peace. It is a song that has carried me in times of joy and in times of sorrow. When I was in high school, a musical group called the Indigo Girls released their album with a song entitled Closer to Fine. I wouldn't know this song until I was in college, but when I heard it, I fell in love with it quick. I went to a concert and along with my friends, I belted out every single word to the song by heart. I'm trying to tell you something about my life. Maybe give me insight between black and white. It begins. You see tunes that carry us, in part carry us because they transport us in time. Whenever I hear that song closer to fine all these years later, I find myself surrounded by the love and memory of my college friends. I go on to attend a number of Indigo Girls concerts in my life, and like many other fans, Closer to Fine would always be among my favorites. It's a song about living life's questions, resting in the mystery and awe and wonder, which for me is always wrapped up in the sacred. We go to the Bible, it concludes this song. We go to the Bible, we go through the workout, we read up on revival and we stand up for the lookout. There's more than one answer to these questions pointing me in a crooked line. And the less I seek my source for a definitive, the closer I am to find. Friends, years later, after college, I find myself attending seminary and wondering why the systematic theology professor's name sounded familiar. And sure enough, Emily Saliers of the Indigo Girls, her father was a United Methodist pastor and seminary professor, Don Saliers. Along with teaching theology and worship, he was an exceptional musician, playing everything from jazz piano to organ. In recent years, Dr. Saliers and his daughter Emily have even written a book together and the title won't surprise you. The title of that book is A Song to Sing, A Life to Live. They write about the songs that have formed and shaped them. They write about songs sung in sanctuaries as well as at clubs and bars. They write about the place of music in the work of protest and justice as activists sing and march, and they celebrate they celebrate the power of a song to carry us through all the living of our days. There is an African proverb, and it goes like this. Before the spirit can descend, a song must be sung. In the weeks ahead, here in these sermons, we will be looking more at this thing called hope. What do we mean when we say we hope? How do we sustain our hope? in difficult times. But before all that, we begin with a song because songs carried Jesus and songs carry us too. 
this day and in the days ahead, I invite you to consider the songs that carry you, to maybe turn on the radio, get out an old album or a hymnal and sing a song and feel yourself carried by the love of God and by the memory of family and friends. May it be so. Amen. At this time, I offer this Psalm 25 translated by Nan Merrill as our prayer. And I also invite you to lift up your own prayers as we pray together. Let us pray. To you, O love, I lift up my soul. O heart within my heart, in you I place my trust. Let me not feel unworthy, let not fear rule over me. Yes, may all who open their hearts savor you and bless the earth. Compel me to know your ways, O love. Instruct me upon your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for through your will I know wholeness. I shall reflect your light both day and night. I know of your mercy, blessed one, and of your unconditional love. You have been with me from the beginning. Forgive the many times I have walked away from you, choosing to follow my own will. I seek your guidance once again. I yearn to know your peace. Companion me as I open to your will. You are gracious and just, O Spirit of Truth, happy to guide those who miss their way. You enjoy teaching all who are open, all who choose to live in truth. Your paths are loving and sure, O Holy One, and those who give witness to you through their lives, are blessed beyond measure. Amen. in worship we give of ourselves to God and we give of ourselves in a variety of ways one of the ways we do that is by contributing financially to the work of Christ in the church we are so grateful for the many ways that so many of you do just that your generosity enables us truly to be a place of unconditional love and justice in action here in the heart of Austin if you feel led to give you can go to the donate button and you can find that on our website at uumc.org. I also wanna let you know about our Lenten special offering this year. It will go to the UT Outpost. The UT Outpost is housed at the University of Texas here in Austin, just across the street from our campus. 
and it has a food pantry so that food insecure students at the University of Texas can receive free food. We as a congregation are continuing to learn more about the hunger needs and the food insecurity among many university students, and we seek to respond in love and in compassion. So if you feel called this day to also contribute to the Lenten special offering, you can do so by again going to the donate button and going down to special offering. Thank you again for your generosity. And now as you go forth, as you go into this world, I want to share with you a benediction written by Jan Richardson for the wilderness and Lenten season. She writes, Beloved is where we begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path with you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be help. I can tell you that on this way, there will be rest. And I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us, bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence whisper our name, beloved, beloved, beloved. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.